I don't get it. It's just not fair. How is it that women live longer than men? Well, that's what we're going to try and figure out today. Welcome back to What's Up Doc. I'm Dr. Michael Cohen and I'm a family medicine specialist. Worldwide today, the average life expectancy for a woman is 75.6 years and for a man, 70.8 years, so almost five years difference on average. When you try and take it apart, you've got to look at all the differences between men and women. Is it a biological difference? Is it a social difference? What exactly is going on here? Is it behaviour? By looking at people who reach the age of 110, 90% of them are females. It's just incredible. If you look back at the last half a century or so, you'll see that worldwide the um, lifespan has actually gone up steadily, but the difference is always there. Again, a bit of a conundrum. It begs the question, if we could figure out the reason for this extra five years, maybe, maybe we'd be able to work out some factors that we can utilize to increase life expectancy for everybody, right? So to take a country's um, level of wealth, if you look at Hong Kong, women live an average of 7% longer than men. But then if you look at a somewhat less uh, successful economical country, such as the Central African Republic, women actually live 8.5% longer than men. So even though people in the Central African Republic live a lot less long than in Hong Kong, the difference is still there. And in fact, it's even more, it's even more significant. Another interesting fact is that although women on average live longer than men on average, women on average have a lot more health issues than men do. So how is it that they're living longer? Well, there are many theories, and I think that all of them have a part to play in this. So I'll start with social and environmental factors. Men smoke more than women, drink more alcohol, and use more drugs than women in most societies. As a result, they have higher rates of lung cancer, tuberculosis, lung disease, heart disease, and cirrhosis of the liver. This is actually changing because with time, women are also starting to engage more and more in similar activities at similar levels. Looking at a study in Europe, um, evidence from 30 different countries in Europe showed that um, within Europe, smoking accounts for 40 to 60% of the mortality difference by gender, while alcohol contributes to 10 to 30% of the gender gap. Seeing as women are starting to smoke more and drink more, the gap should start decreasing. However, there is also such a thing as a time lag. So although that may be the case, we may not be seeing it yet in the statistics because it takes time to actually show up. What do men die from? Men die from injuries, unintentional, occupational, war, car accidents, intentional injuries such as suicide, and on the point of suicide, men are much more successful at completing suicide than women, although women may try more than men on average. Men are also much more likely to die from some of the leading causes of death, which are heart disease, cancers of the respiratory system of the lungs, um, motor vehicle accidents, suicide, cirrhosis, as I mentioned earlier, um, prostate cancer, Another rule within Mother Nature is that, as in every species, the larger the individual, the shorter their lifespan. So this doesn't matter if you're a male or a female, the larger organism lives less long. And males are taller than females on average. And as a result, they have a lot more cells that divide throughout their life. And as cells divide, the length of the chromosomes, the ends of the chromosomes, which are called telomeres, actually shorten with the number of divisions. 
So the more divisions that happen, the shorter the telomeres. And this signifies aging of the cells and therefore men tend to live less long than women. So this is another theory. Here's another one for you. Menstruation, women bleeding every month for some 30, 40 years of their life is not an insignificant amount of blood loss. And that sounds like it's not such a good thing. However, if you think about it, what are they losing in the blood? They lose iron, which means that they're often iron deficient. And iron is actually a source of free radical production in the body. So at the same time as they might be teetering on being anemic, they're also having a slight bonus to this, which is that they have less toxic load in their body. And they're probably also losing things like heavy metals uh, and other toxins, which men don't get rid of so easily. So it's actually not a bad thing to have some bleeding every month. And I think that this might be a contributing factor to why women live actually longer than men. There's also a theory called the unguarded X hypothesis. What is that? Sounds a bit weird. Well, you probably remember that men have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, and that that's because the chromosomes are actually shaped like an X and a Y, and women have two X chromosomes. Now, if a disease is only found on the X chromosome, and it's a particular type of inheritance of that gene, so it's something called X-linked recessive, well, for a man, if they have that gene, they only have one X chromosome, which means that they are going to get that disease and they may get that disease more severely. For a woman, however, she would only have it on one of her X chromosomes. So she has an abnormal gene on the one X chromosome, but on the other X chromosome, she doesn't have the abnormal gene. So in a sense, her risk has been mitigated somewhat and therefore the severity of the illness caused by that gene being on the X chromosome is also mitigated. So this could also be a reason why women live longer than men. What else separates men from women? Hormones, of course, testosterone, estrogen. Those are the big ones that most people talk about and are aware of. Of course, there are many others and their levels are quite different between men and women, but these are the two major ones. There is a fact that is that estrogen actually improves insulin sensitivity. So with women having higher levels of estrogen, they have a, um, an advantage, let's say, from a metabolic point of view, which means that they're less likely to develop heart disease or certainly to develop it at a later stage, whereas men are more likely to develop it. And the reason partly for that is because they have higher levels of testosterone. And there is an association with higher levels of testosterone and the development of heart disease. Now, when women go through the menopause, their estrogen levels drop and they probably fall to similar levels to what a man has. And at this point, women's um, risk of heart disease increases as well. And the way that this can be mitigated, which is used, uh, not, probably not by enough women, is by the use of some kind of hormonal replacement. And hormone replacement basically can then start reducing the rate of heart disease in women. On the subject of um, estrogen and hormonal replacement, what do I think about it? Well, I think that it has a place. I think that it suits some women. And I think that for many women, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to suit them. And this is a matter of a little bit of trial and error. For some people, it can really improve the symptoms that they get with the menopause, especially the hot flushes, um, the sweating, um, uh, the mood being uh, going up and down. Um, but um, do I think it's for every woman? Probably not. Here's a study for men, um, and it talks about late onset hypogonadism syndrome, which basically means that they have low testosterone. So as men age, and it, this starts from actually a relatively young age and certainly in the early 40s, levels of testosterone start dropping. And as levels of testosterone start dropping, there's associated lower mood, um, irritability, some sexual dysfunction that can develop, decreased muscle mass, strength, 
and decreased bone mineral density, as well as an increase in uh, obesity, um, especially around the abdomen, and the development of what's called metabolic syndrome, which is basically um, you know, becoming fatter, and uh, becoming less sensitive to insulin and more resistant to insulin. So while there are all these adverse effects that happen as testosterone drops as men get older, it's important to recognize that while testosterone is higher, it has a lot of positive effects for men, which probably significantly accounts for why men are healthier through life than women are. Of course, as they get older and their testosterone drops, then their risks for diseases such as heart disease increases significantly with that. And this probably is part of the reason for why men live less long than women. So what about from an evolutionary point of view? Well, if we look back, men were probably, um, they probably had an evolutionary advantage in being stronger and uh, fitter and taller than women because what's the purpose of a man from an evolutionary point of view? It's basically to uh, help a woman to become pregnant and for her to have a child and then to protect the woman and child up till the point that the child is able to be somewhat independent. And therefore, if you look at it, men probably needed to be healthier and stronger, but for a, you know, there, there was not any great purpose in them living beyond a certain age. Whereas women had to um, have the children and then grow the children and then be there as a mother. And um, of course, pregnancy also had a toll on their health. And this probably explains another aspect as to why men tend to live healthier but shorter lives and women tend to live longer but un less healthy lives, let's say. So what's going to happen to this five-year gap? Until now, it seems like it's been pretty steady that women live longer but less healthy lives and men live shorter but healthy lives. In due course, it could be that because women have adopted more and more the kinds of attitudes and behaviours that men have had until now, it could be that they uh, uh, also start living shorter lives and perhaps even healthier lives. Uh, on the other hand, it's interesting for me to think about it as a physician because I think that as the world has modernized that people are becoming less and less resilient. The less we're exposed to um, harmful, potentially harmful stimuli, difficult situations, and I'm talking about both physical and mental, the less resilient people become because they're not used to dealing with harder times. So it's also possible that the gap will stay exactly as it is, but that the lifespan or health span for both men and women will actually drop. So when are we going to know the answer to this? Well, I think it's still going to take quite a few more years, probably a couple, if not longer, of decades. And the telling signs will be that if the gap narrows, then this suggests very much that behavioural and um, environmental reasons are the cause of the gap and if the gap stays the same it would suggest very much that these are biological genetic um, factors. The other thing to mention not to make things even more complicated is that there's a huge interplay between our genes and the environment so environmental changes can actually affect the way in which our genes work. So Here's a question for you. What would you prefer? Would you prefer to have a longer health span or a longer lifespan? I know what I would prefer. Thanks for watching today and look forward to seeing you soon again. Please do make comments in the box down below and have a great day.